Welcome back. Hopefully you've watched the first video on file block allocation. If you recall, the problem we're trying to solve is how does the file system maintain the linkage between the actual file and the data on the backing disk? When I access a file, I have bytes. A file is a virtual set of contiguous bytes. How do I know where on disk these bytes happen to be? Here's the code we were looking at. I basically open up a file. It's called cat.jpg. It's a picture of my cat. I go ahead and move the pointer, the seek pointer of the file, to hex 3000. After this, I read into the buffer, a private buffer, 8192 bytes. The question is, how does the file know where those 8192 bytes are on the backing storage? Here's a visual. On the left is the cat JPEG. It's broken up into block sizes. In this example, the block sizes are 4K. That's not a bad size for a block. In fact, Linux uses 4K blocks for a number of file systems. And back behind it, you see a disk partition. And on those disk partitions, the blocks are actually spread across in different places. The metadata which maps the cat JPEG block to the actual backing block, uh, sometimes called file block allocation, and it's the problem we're trying to solve. Last time, we talked about contiguous file block allocation. This was pretty simple. Basically, a file was contiguous on the physical storage or on the disk partition. So if a file happened to be five blocks in size, you would just need to know the starting position on the disk and know that the next five blocks belong to that file. The problem with that file allocation uh, mechanism was the fact that you could not grow the file. Once I've used a spot on the disk, if there happened to be an adjacent file on the disk, I could not grow the file that I started with. And of course, we want to be able to grow our files. Linked allocation solves that problem. Here's an example. I have a file, and the file's name is Jeep. It starts at storage block number nine. Within storage block number nine, there's a pointer to the next block, which in this case is block number 16 on the disk. Notice that 16 has a pointer in the block itself to storage block number one. And then finally, storage block number one points to block number 10 and all the way to storage block number 25, which is the last block of the file. And so the Jeep file has one, two, three, four, five blocks backing it, and each block points to the next block. Notice if I wanted to grow the size of the Jeep file, I would just have to find a free block on the storage allocation on the disk and link it in. So this allows the file to grow. However, there are some problems. The first problem is if I want to index into the middle of the file, I have a problem. I need to go and search all over the disk in order to find a block in the middle of the file. So indexing into the file is very expensive. Imagine trying to go to block number 1000 in a file. I'd have to traverse 1023 other, 1000 other files blocks before I got to it. In order to uh, deal with this problem, the fat file system was introduced. You may have heard of the FAT file system. It's in place on many of the early Windows operating systems. The FAT file system keeps a table, or a FAT table, a FAT allocation table, in memory. This table has one entry corresponding to every block on storage. A file points, has an index into that table where its first storage block is. It's best to see with an example. Notice here I have a file named test, and its start block is 217. This means that block 217 on the disk is the first block of the file. Now, if I go into the FAT table, I see at location 217, the number 618. This says the second block for the file is block 618 on the disk. Location 618 in the FAT table is 339 which is the third block of the file. So, 
This file is made up of a block at 217, 618, and 339. What's nice about this is the fat table is cached, and so traversing the table is very fast relative to kind of traversing a disk because you're in memory making accesses. So if I needed to go to block number 1,000 in a file, I would just have to traverse the fat table 1,000 times, but that's all memory accesses, which is super fast compared to going out to the disk, as I've said. There's a number of FAT file systems, FAT12, FAT16, and FAT32. Each of these corresponds to the size of the backing disk that the file system itself can manage. FAT12 corresponds to a FAT table with entries of size 12 bits. FAT16, 16 bits, and FAT32 is 32 bits. Let's take a look at FAT16 to understand how big of a backing disk that could be managed. In a FAT16 system, each entry is 16 bits. So the total number of entries is 2 to the 16th, or 64K. In a FAT system, each block size is 32K. So if I multiply 64K by 32K, I can map up to a 2 gigabyte disk. Relatively small today, but large back in the day. FAT32 is introduced, which can get up to um, 8 terabytes, if you would do the math, uh, but in reality, just 2 terabytes.